Sorry, didn't mean to turn off my camera. Sorry. They can hear me. Oh, they can hear me, huh? How are you doing? And we're live. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Beastly Thoughts Show, episode 115, for Christ's sakes. That is <laughs> nuts. <laughs> like, yeah. That's a lot of episodes, man. Yes, like, yes. It's over two years worth of shows, man. Yeah, yeah. We've that's been, amazing. Been really, really hard. Yeah. That's dedication, and uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't exist if it weren't for these wonderful people who tune in and watch us every week. Yeah, one hundred and fifteen. Yeah, wow, that's that like a last, big number, isn't it? Yeah, that's like the last number on my last speeding ticket, man. It's just wow. <laughs> why is it hitting me now instead of at like a hundred a hundred episodes? You know, like why why now one hundred and fifteen? It's such a random number. Why now is it hitting me? <laughs> it's 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 like how young people like Robbie tell us that you're old when you're 30, but then we get like 37 and realize that we actually feel old. <laughs> Probably I don't know what you're 30. talking about. I have no idea what you're talking about. All right, all right. <laughs> What's up, guys? Man, I really missed you guys. We weren't able to get together last week. We had a lot of uh, extenuating circumstances that that took place. Uh, between the three of us, and uh, I'm really happy to be here. Whenever I miss a Beastly Thought show, I feel like one of my balls like goes back up, and it just dropped what? again. So <laughs> I'm really, really happy to be here. Okay, okay, okay. That's the way to say it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to be back, man. We got a lot to talk about. I want to hear about uh, PlayStation VR. Beastly, I know you've been testing that out. I definitely want to hear about that. I want to hear what you guys have been playing. You, you want to just... Get right off yeah, to us. Let's, let's, let's hear it, man. it, man. What have you been let's up to? Show started. All right, so I'll start off. The game I've been playing uh, mostly has been uh, Odin Spear. I actually just beat that game. Uh, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. I put 45 hours into the single-player campaign. Wow. Uh, I did a review on it, and uh, like I remember, it's awesome, but it's actually better than before. That game has really been sucking up a lot of my time. There's five characters, five very long stories. Uh, very engaging how every story intertwines with one another. You might go through one character's story and you'll be fighting someone you you don't you won't really understand why or what their motivations are until you play with that character. Uh -huh. So I, by the time you get with all five, it's like watching like a, a season of you know House or something. You understand everybody's perspective, and uh, it was really really a, a very entertaining and very nostalgic road for me. I enjoyed that quite a bit. If you guys have you play the it, whole please. the whole the same story all the way through on each character, or are you playing like different stories for each character? Different stories, different okay. play play styles, different move sets, and and there's tons of unlockable moves and upgrades for each character. It's like are the levels skill the same? Are you going through the same levels? No, the levels are totally wow, different. that's pretty impressive. And, and, but you will fight the same bosses through each one, but it'll be different motivations for the reason that you're facing this boss versus why you may have faced them at another time. Mm -hmm. But uh, each character, like there's one character who doesn't use hack and slash at all. Her name's Mercedes. She flies around and she has like a gun that shoots like lasers. And it's, it turns her whole play, yeah, her whole play through is like kind of a shooter and she uh, has all these upgradable moves with this laser playset. Everybody else uses whips and swords and all this different stuff you got to learn. And and one great thing about Odin Spear that's really unique is as you grow and you level up, the level cap is 50 for each character and you unlock moves, you can go into your options and you can make those moves whatever control scheme that you want. So if you wanted to like throw a fireball custom to do a controls. Totally I love it. Custom, yeah, so and it works with the with the um, the analog control and the digital, so you can actually change it depending on your play style. You can push up on the D pad and a certain button to do a special move, or you can go around or you know up, down, left, right, however you want to do it. It's really really awesome. Had a ball playing that game, and on top of that, they've got new game plus, which allows you to start the game over again with all your previous loot and your experience. And they've got um, boss rush mode, which is you versus thirty bosses in a row. Uh huh. Oh. Uh, it, it, yeah, they just added all these new things. There's also new bosses and new animations that they've added to the PlayStation 4 and Vita versions of the game. It's just really an incredible game. And, and if you haven't played it, check out my review. It'll give you really an idea of just how much is in this game. The game is gorgeous, uh, too. It's, it's beautiful. There's there's so much in this game. Everything that you do is really under your control. Like uh, all the items that you find in the world, you can. You can kind of craft on them. Like if you find fruit, food in the world, you can uh, kind of combine different foods to make recipes. You can give it to a chef. He'll make you that recipe. And as you eat it, it's EXP. 
and it boosts you up and it, it actually you can level up just by eating crazy foods. Mm-hmm. You know, you find seeds out in the world, you plant them, then you can nourish them, they grow and they give you certain, uh, you know, different abilities as you eat them or, or you can combine them with other things. It's just it's really an incredible game. It's hard to believe it came out in the sixth generation. It is really a phenomenal game. And, and I implore you to try it. I didn't expect it to be a full price sixty dollar game though, uh, and especially when I was downloading it at three and a half gigs, I was like, "Is this game really only three and a half gigs?" But then forty five hours later, I was like, "Yeah, it was three and a half gigs." <laughs> somehow, yeah. somehow they were able to get all that game, and and it's all voice acted in in English and in Japanese, and it's just really an incredible and beautiful game. Uh, and Vanillaware got down. That was really what they learned, how they honed their skills to make games like Dragon's Crown. And Muramasa, and uh, they're really awesome at what they do. What was the name of it again? It's <laughs> Odin Sphere. Odin Sphere. I, 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 I saw the question in, the in chat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Odin Sphere. Check out the review on the Beast of the Gamer channel. It, it'll give you great insight into what that game is. I went through every aspect of it. I really tried to leave no questions unanswered in my review. Uh, and it's just, if you have $60 and you want to buy one game that's going to last you for half of a year... This game can do it. It doesn't have it doesn't have any multiplayer. It's just insane. You know, so much content in the game. It's really, really incredible how they were able to use like video game magic and witchery to create that kind of game. And that's really what I've been playing. I kind of goofed off and was playing uh, some of my Xbox One stuff uh, yesterday and uh, and uh, Thursday. I'm trying to get back into that. I'm really enjoying. uh, I've been playing some uh, NBA 2K16 because my home team, the Cavaliers, won. You know, uh, you guys might know the gentleman LeBron James is from the same city that I'm from. So I had to uh, represent, even though I'm not a sports sim fan. But I did get I did get into uh, playing the PlayStation VR. This was the weekend before last. No, actually, no, it was last weekend. I'm sorry. Uh, I played it on Saturday and uh, I want to talk to you guys about last week because it really blew my mind. If you guys don't know, you can go out and try PlayStation VR now at over 300 uh, Best Buy and GameStop store locations around the country. Sorry, Robbie. Um, yeah, and, uh, I don't think we have it here. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll just hey, are, you talk, are you talking about Best Buys or or GameStops? We have but, Best Buy here, you asshole. So just to <laughs> let you know. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. I didn't know. What do you think was... Canada is? Like a third world country? What do you think <laughs> are? Yeah. It might Zimbabwe be, it, or some shit. Like... It, might, it might be a second world. Uh, but... I uh, I got in there and I played. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of the game because it keeps eluding me. I've never played it before. E Valkyrie, uh-huh. uh, and yes. this game is a space game where you get into a cockpit and you fly around in space, a la Star Wars. And I didn't I didn't know what to expect. I never put on VR headset before. I put this thing on and I looked down at my body and it was another body. It was the body of the person in the cockpit with arms, legs, boobs. You Thanks take a, a little lot, peek e. under the pants as you lift up the waistband. Oh, see that's what you had to work I, with. When I, when I bring it home. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was inside of this little area, inside of a spaceship, getting ready to be jettisoned out into space. And there was, um, I guess, an overseer who was explaining to me what was going on outside of the ship and what was going to, what my services were needed as. And I was just looking around, and uh, you know, Kate was next to me because she was going next. And I was like, "What the hell is this?" And I was really in this place. Everywhere I looked, there was something. And I was like, oh, this just feels so crazy. And then I saw the door start to open. And then I just started shooting out. And I felt like I was really flying out. Uh And I went out of space. And it was real space. I was like, oh, my God. Everywhere I looked, there was just stars out in the distance. And everything moved so fluently. And it was crystal clear. Well, I had issues uh, because my head is so big. I had to kind of adjust it. Uh But once once I got it adjusted, everything was so clear. It was like watching... You know, a 1080p TV, but I was actually inside the TV. Yeah. And uh, then you could see these giant ships teleporting in from the distance. And these were our adversaries. They were coming to fight us and kill us. It was me and some other AI-controlled ships. And these giant ships came in, and you could see all these small ships jettisoning off of them. And they were marked in red, you know, through our little UI. And I was like, holy shit. I started flying around and killing them, Dave. I went... Oh, above this ship and like kind of flew over this giant ship and came back around and the whole time I was like getting vertigo because there wasn't any ground so every time I looked down I expected there to be ground it was just more space and I look up and after a while I didn't know where you know where I was coming from I really felt like I was in space the experience was incredible 
the controls worked very, very well. It felt like the traditional uh, shooter game that you'd play on your PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 3 or Xbox. Uh, it, it just had slightly different controls. But everything worked really well. I, I controlled you know, the direction of my ship and everything with the controller. Just I was able to articulate where I looked, what ships I was actually focusing at with my head. And that degree of immersion was incredible. I can't say it enough. It was incredible. Uh, I got to play for about two minutes. There was unbelievably just only about four or five people in line. No. And and finally, this evil woman came and I felt her take the controller out of my hand. And I was like, <laughs> she, she couldn't she couldn't see me. But then she took it I'm off. And I, look, I looked over at my wife and I was like, oh, my God. And so uh, Kate came over and she sat down and she got to play a game called Into the Deep, which is a game in is which the shark you, one? Yes. <sighs> I got the whole thing on video too, Robbie. It was insane. Oh uh, my god! Now this game, you don't actually use a controller. You actually are put inside of a giant shark tank, and you are lowered into the sea. And uh, the lower and lower you get, you see crazier and crazier things. And I, you know, after watching that, I was like, God, this is probably the one I should have played because at first she's going down into the ocean, and you could see kind of the sun, you could see the light, you know, from mm-hmm. outside of the ocean. And the lower she got, it got darker and darker. You see these crazier things like eels. Manta rays were flying, you know, coming around her, and Kay was about to fall out of her chair <laughs> because they, they were they were coming, and she go, oh shit, right? And then when she went through like a little uh, catacomb in the crust of, I guess, the ocean or whatever, as she was coming through, you saw all these jellyfish coming up. They have the screen in front of you, so the people watching could see the breakout yeah. boxes there, so you can see what she sees. But these illuminated jellyfish are coming up by her feet, and she was like, oh my god, and I was looking like, holy shit. And then out of the distance, she saw the shark. She knew the shark was coming. And and the way she described it to me was, even though she knew it wasn't real, it felt so real. The shark, it looked unbelievable. I couldn't believe it was PlayStation VR. All right, let you me ask were... you some questions. I got to ask you some questions. Because sure, I, sure. I haven't put the headset on yet. I want to know. All right, so you said the headset was a fit tight. It was a tight fit around your head? No, no, it, it wasn't a tight fit. It was just, it wasn't on my eyes. Close you just to had me. to adjust it for you. But once yeah. you had it adjusted, it was fine? Perfect. Awesome. All right. And my you head see is the size of both of yours combined. In the <laughs> in the uh, in the view, could you see any like screen dooring effect or no, did it just, no. it just look like looking at a TV? It so on almost, the display that they had that you could watch while your wife was doing it, it was was it tr- was that display tracking where she was looking? Yes. That's pretty cool. Every, everywhere yeah. she so, looked is what we saw. All right. At four hundred dollars, do you think this thing is worth it? Absolutely. There's yeah. no question. Cool. Even you no only okay, question. so you played two games which are eh, you know somewhat light Tech experiences, mostly. right? Yeah, yeah. they're light yeah. experiences, but that's an experience that I it's definitely worth 400 bucks to me. Yeah, it's it's something so different, Briar. It's I've never experienced anything like that. I mean, I can't even talk about it without my eyes watering for older guys so, like us. This is something they've been promising since like oh 1995. God. Remember Long the um, yeah. punch out punch out arcade where you stood into it and yeah. it was this little green frame. I was like, yeah. this isn't really VR, man. This is VR. Briar, when I tell you that I got into that game and I felt like I was really in space. Yeah. For the first time in my life, I was transported to another world. And the thing is, you can see the UI of what she's doing, bringing you to the actual demo that you're playing. They had this big ass screen, and I could see how you could watch a, like a movie theater version of your films. Yeah. It was incredible. It was it was a regular TV, like a PlayStation type of screen, but it was huge. And mm-hmm. I was like, what is that? And she was like, oh, that you'll be able to watch movies and stuff on that. I was like, what? I felt like that I was inside of no a movie. That has no appeal to me. I like it. To me, I cannot imagine sitting with a VR headset watching a movie. I like it. No oh, appeal. I'm, I'm, I'm in the, the nosebleed seats. But I think that the whole thing, as far as what I played and what I saw, seeing my wife almost have a heart attack because the shark tried to break the door off and get at her. Yeah. It actually did break the door off, and she was looking out into the sea. I told her to jump out, and she she said she felt like she actually could. Unfortunately, during these demonstrations, you're restricted to a seat, and uh, you're not able to move around. Yeah. But these these games are actually tracked. Were you uh, playing them with the a PlayStation controller or with the Move controller? I, ha- I had the, con- the you can choose, but I had the regular PlayStation Four controller. Uh, whenever you go to the GameStop, I don't know about Best Buy, they have all that stuff there, all the peripherals right there laid out for you, just in case you wanted to try them. But I'm gonna have to go to a, find a list of like where the nearest one is because I gotta check this out. Check out. I got it too. Check out the, the video that mm-hmm. I did. Um, 
I actually uh, talked about, I did a Beauty and the Beast segment last week when Kate and I went. Uh, there's a link in that video. If you click on that link, it'll pop up and you can see where, where it is nearest to you and what times they actually have it. But it was incredible, man. It blew my mind. I've never had an experience where I was totally immersed like that. I'm looking forward to owning it. Uh, and now, you know, after we both played it, we know we both got to have our own day one. Oh, shit. I'm so you, you signed up for two of them, huh? Whoa. Well, That's a yeah. big investment there. Yeah, right? Yeah. Well, it's going to be an yeah, expensive I mean, Christmas in the Beastly household. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Two yeah. VRs. I'm sure you're going to get a Neo. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, come on. <laughs> and I'm getting a Scorpio. I want the whole thing. Don't and even if, know what the deal is going to cost you yet, but you're, you signed up for 800 bucks worth of uh, goggles. Take my money. <laughs> well, the thing is, yeah. Neo, I don't know what it is. I have a pretty good idea of what this is. Yeah. And, and after after playing E Valkyrie and seeing that it actually works and it looks great and it controls good. Yeah. I know the games like Resident Evil Seven are going to work great. And, and, and having an experience like that... People no aren't talking. Like, I haven't played that Resident Evil 7 demo, but people are not talking like that thing's too hot. Well, it, it's, it, the 7 demo is not the Resident Evil 7 game. It's kind of like what... Ah, Konami. Whenever I say that name, I feel like i got to take a shit. Um, <laughs> what Konami did with the PT trailer, even though PT was... From what was, I've heard, again, I haven't played it, it's like they were trying to make the PT demo, and they failed. I don't think uh, they failed. I thought it was good. Yeah, yeah I mean, it definitely. definitely feels a lot like PT. I'll agree with that. But I it, thought it, it was does. really good. I mean, if you ask me, I'm, I'm happy that a company like Capcom picked up the reins of what PT was because Konami just, they obviously don't care about it. Yeah. And and, and Capcom saw the um, public Which is incredible response. because it created so much hype in the community, in the gaming community. So many people were excited for PT. Everybody for them to does. let that just drop. Like, what the fuck are you guys doing? I, I'm not going to get into a Konami rap. We know. Yeah, it was a dumb decision. Yeah. Beastly, anything else you've been playing? Uh, that's about it, man. That's it? Um, if, if, if there was anything else, I really I really can't say right at the top. But I'm looking forward to my next review. I'm going to actually let my uh, my subscribers pick the game. I'm going to oh. go through the list. I want to play Witcher. I want to play um, uh, Metal Gear Solid Five. I'm going to let them actually pick. Because I've been having a great time these last couple of weeks. My wife and I have completed five games together, side by side, butt naked after the kids go to sleep. And it's been an incredibly fun time. You have no idea how much fun I have with that joystick. Robbie, what about you? Yeah, Robbie. Please, move Swing on. that joystick around, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been playing, Robbie? Uh, I have been playing uh, everything this week. I mean, I've been playing on PC, on PS4, a lot of random stuff. But one special game I've been playing this week was one... That's been a long time coming. And this is from developer Play Dead Games. I believe they made uh, Limbo quite a few years ago. This is their newest game, Inside. It's like a spiritual successor Ooh, to Limbo. I heard that's good. Yeah, I heard it's yeah. really good. And I got to say, what a special game it is. It's yeah. really something to just sit down one night. It's like a four or five hour game. Just sit down, play it through in one playthrough, surround sound headphones on. It is a really special experience. There are some genuinely shocking moments in that game. And without spoiling anything, like there's no real narration in the game. You're basically just a boy who's escaping like this mental facility, it seems. It doesn't tell you anything, which is the amazing thing. It literally doesn't tell you a thing about what's going it's the on in the game. Kind of game. And it just teaches you all of these different things about what's happening. It doesn't say a single word. Like it's amazing. It's a really cool experience. And there are some very shocking moments. I won't even say anything. But. No. The, the, game. the name inside, I've heard a lot of people talking about it, mostly in the gaming pundit community. What does the name have to do with the game? Is it because you're inside of a mental institution or are you trying to get out of it? What's yeah, you're inside like this mental facility and it seems like the boy is sort of progressing through it. I haven't beaten the game, but I've put a couple hours into it and yeah, I mean, I love it so far. It's really something special. It, it, and It is kind of an indie type of uh, experience. Is it a full price game or? $20 game. Wow. Yeah. Totally worth it, though. It's really something very unique. Now, I remember the game. I'm trying to remember the name of it, but the character, everybody called him Yarny. Is it Unravel. 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 I loved Unravel. Unraveled. Yeah. That was is good. It, is it along the same lines as far as uh, the the quality of the game, would you say? Oh, 100%. Yeah. It's a 2D platformer, just like Unravel. There's different puzzles you'll do along the way as well. Uh, there's Oh, yeah. Okay. I think uh, I saw the trailer for it. There's like... I think there's multiple characters. It's like a psychological type of game as well. I don't but think the there's multiple characters. Be... I saw an old man. 
No, you don't. You only play as the boy. There are these characters you kind of control with your mind. I won't spoil that anymore, but you, you'll kind of find out. Like you don't even. There's not other characters really. It's hard to explain. Okay, but it is the puzzler. It is mostly a puzzle game, right? Uh, a, mostly platforming, and then there's a lot of puzzles thrown in there as well. So there will okay. be times where you have to run through like a death trap fast enough. That I'm again, I'm not gonna get into too much detail, yeah, but yeah, that's a, it. Seems really hard for people to talk about this game without spoiling it. Go into it yeah, blind is the yeah, best way to do but it. Everybody's Sounds raving like about it. Everybody I've talked to is raving about it. It seems like a really good game. If you like, especially if you already liked Limbo, like it's just oh, yeah. it's even better than that. Like a lot better. Wow, yeah. that's yeah. that's very rare for it's a developer to. It's a, uh, basically a successor. Yeah. To, to, to improve on a classic like that, Limbo is a damn <laughs> classic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good stuff. So so inside, uh, is has been taking up all your time. And uh, is, have you been playing anything else, or has that been primarily what you've been into? Just a lot of, I don't know, random stuff on PC, like Serious Sam and Counter-Strike here and there. I love some a Serious bunch of Sam. Stuff. I love Serious yeah. Sam. <laughs> Serious Sam is excellent. Very yeah, fun. It is. It's just it's just distilled fun. Yeah. Uh, so I finally yeah. opened up uh, Uncharted 4 the other day. The it, Destiny servers it, went down. It. The Destiny servers went down. I was like, shit. I'm going to yep. play some Uncharted. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> so I streamed it for, I think, about two hours. The Destiny servers came up. I, I was like, ah, I'm just going to keep going with Uncharted. Finally, I had to get off so I could feed the dogs, um, you know, do some stuff around the house. Uh, about an hour later, I found myself right back here staring at the screen until 2 a.m. playing Uncharted 4. That game is what? amazing. It is told you, Briar. It is the best Uncharted they've made, and I'm a huge yes! fan of the Uncharted games. Like it, it is really that good. Gorgeous. I love. Now they're not open worlds, right? But these environments that make you feel Ooh. like you're exploring. Even though yeah. if you go and you prod around the edges, you're gonna figure out. Yeah, there's. You know, you're basically in a big tube, but it's just so yeah, big. Yeah. You know, it just it feels very very open. You feel like that explorer. Um, I, I gotta say, I am really impressed with Uncharted Four. I've I'd, I'd had watched video on it, I had taught, I'd read reviews on it, so I got, I had an understanding of what this game was. But to actually sit down and play it, this one hits me right in the sweet spot. It was funny. We were, I was streaming it, and Nathan Drake. I would say something like in reaction to something, and Nathan Drake would say the exact same thing. Me too. Like three oh, seconds so later, that- it happened like three different times. <laughs> Like, yeah. exactly the same words would come out of my mouth, and then they'd come out of his mouth. It was pretty funny. Um, that's, that's an incredible writing, man. Neil Druckmann. Yeah, I haven't what? I haven't what? checked out the uh, multiplayer yet. I am looking forward to trying the multiplayer out, but I got to say, the, the story of Uncharted 4, the way they've developed characters, the way you feel like a connection to these characters and the their, their inner, inner workings and their relationships with each other feel real. They don't feel forced. It's yeah. just a fantastic game. I, I'm I'm glad I finally got around to it. Maybe at some point I'll finally open up Far Cry 4, but we'll have to see. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said up the comments. I did not expect that. <laughs> yeah. now, now, let me ask you a question, Brian. There is a certain part of the game, like within the first hour, hour and a half, uh-huh. where, where you're actually at home, uh, and you actually do something in your living room that's really incredible. I'm not going to spoil it. But just in case, hope hope to God that nobody spoiled this for you. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't spoiled for you, what was your reaction to this big? I know exactly what this is. I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Oh really? No, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Was it? Get the, out of here. Was it? Were well, playing a video game? Oh okay. Yeah, that was okay. I I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I was actually, I I was more impressed with like a few minutes before that when I was still up in the attic and I was playing like. That's playing. No. Yeah, <laughs> like I thought that was balls, the dark like that hit me right in the feels because that's like, just the kind of stupid shit I still do, you know. <laughs> you hey, give me you a Nerf what, gun, man? something's getting shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, in Uncharted, we never really had a chance to really talk about it because you didn't play it before. But in that house, to me, is some of the most amazing and breathtaking moments in that game. Yeah, walking through it, looking in like when you walk into the bathroom, you look in the mirror, and you see him kind of. Fix his hair, or say something crazy, or Details going to going downstairs well, and you, grabbing the dinner. You and- leave the house, right, and you go to uh, I don't want to spoil too much of it, but like a, a European city, and then you go to an African city. The European city felt like Uncharted, right? I'm like, this is more Uncharted. It's more of the same. Yeah. Then you get to Africa, and I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm I'm trying to keep it intentionally vague. 
And I was like, holy shit, this is nothing like any Uncharted I've ever played. Uh, but it felt, it still felt like Uncharted. I also like what they did with the combat where they actually, they melded in some of the climbing and the parkour with the shooting. I still don't like the shooting that much. Like it still doesn't, it's still not like a top tier shooter in my book. Mm -hmm. But the way they melded in the parkour and in the, in the climbing around with the shooting and some stealth makes it much more interesting. I still forgive the fact that the shooting doesn't feel amazing by itself, you know? But I really don't give a shit <laughs> that so, the so, shooting so far, doesn't feel great because I'm just so Ryan, compelled really, to keep going. Good. So you really, really like the game. I know yeah. you've always been an Uncharted fan. And oh, you yeah. said something incredible. Like, as soon as you start talking about it, it's the best one ever. So, and you didn't beat it yet. So that must be a hell of an right. impression that this game has left on you. Wow. Yeah, I haven't beaten it yet. And I have heard that the end drags on a little bit, which is a, a thing that Uncharted has done in the past several times. Ending is awesome. Yeah, the, yeah. Like the epilogue is really good. I won't say a thing about that. <laughs> That's the part I'm talking about. All right. Oh, yeah. my God. So, uh, I also been playing some Destiny, obviously. Uh, Trials of Osiris. No. I got to play Trials of Osiris uh, for for uh, charity today, which was really cool. A lot of you guys who are in the chat right now got to uh, come on by. We were playing. Uh, DT Huna was hosting a charity stream for uh, cancer research, and that was really fun. Uh, played some Trials of Osiris. Got my ass whooped. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> epically, but I had fun nonetheless. DT Hoon is a hell of a guy. Uh, it was really, it was really cool. I love doing stuff like that. I hope to get to the, the chance to do stuff like that in the future, uh, and hopefully someday we can do something like that for the. I think I've said something like that about eight times. Uh, hopefully we can do uh, something in that vein uh, here in the Beastly Thought Show. That'd be a lot of fun. Absolutely, yeah. I'd be down for good cause. I, I need a hundred hours of practice, but I'd be down. <laughs> all right so, so i think that's it for what we've been playing you want to talk about some news yeah robbie what you got for us this week man all right so first bit of news we got this week is about destiny and uh to do with rise of iron because of course we know that's not spirit fingers look at Ryan's very there. excited already <laughs> i need to make a gift for that Someone, someone screen cap that and give it, please, and send it to yeah, us. Thanks awesome. very much. Oh, shit. Uh, I got the yeah, clip system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's clips now. That's true. Someone clip that. Uh, so Bungie basically went into more detail about Rise of Iron because, of course, that's not going to be on last-gen consoles. We already know that. It's already news. They've gone kind of more into more details about Zer, especially, how he's not going to be – well, he is going to be on last-gen, but he's not going to be selling new items, new weapons, and stuff like that. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, people are just upset about this, but personally, I saw it coming from a mile oh, away. Wow. I didn't I see it coming. Not for a DLC. That. Yeah, I was surprised. I was surprised. So so how is this exactly going to affect last gen? Rise of Iron gonna... will not get... is not being developed for last gen. So if you own a 360 or a PS3 and you're playing Destiny, you're basically playing the final version of that game now. Uh, yep. However, stuff is actually going to get deleted uh, come September. Uh, there's no longer going to be Iron Banner. There's no longer going to be Trials of Osiris. So <gasps> No live events. What? Yeah, some of that stuff is actually getting pulled out, which sucks, man. It sucks hard. Yeah. Wow. But you can see why they're doing it. You know, All that stuff takes a lot of server maintenance and stuff like that. But Bungie did come out and say it's only 10% of the population. It's a hardcore 10%. I think they're really upset about it. Uh, but that those consoles are super old. The PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One have been around for three years now. You know, we're already starting to look at the next gen. Yeah, <laughs> you know, well, it's yeah, time the next to move gen. on. Yeah. You know? I think it's time to, to, to step into the 90s is what they're saying. All right. Uh, and so the next little bit of news is actually something that hits close to home because I got little girls. The official Minecraft feature, the, the official Minecraft feature film will hit theaters on May 24th 2019 so That's we got we saw. <laughs> my girls won't be little girls anymore uh, i'll be a be grown man by that time finally yeah, me, me too robbie yeah well we we were uh discussing what was that the, date um, again i know it was 2019 but what was may, the date may 24th how did they pick may 24th like why not like <laughs> spring 2019 <laughs> know, like, hey this movie's not coming out till 2019 may 24th at 2 p.m You'll be able to watch. <laughs> exact time and date. Three years the, ago, right? the, the, other, the other part of this news, which Robbie didn't mention, is uh, the film was being uh, produced by Team Eco. So, what? Um, 
What? Yeah, so it must be 2029, um, maybe. Oh, oh, uh, I think you're meaning one of the writers that worked at Team Eco. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're correct on that. No, Wait. I'm totally making it up. Okay. <laughs> Hold you on. Want? I'm totally making what that shit up. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, I thought, you, I thought actually one of the writers did from hey, Team what Eco. Does, wrong. What yeah. does Team Eco, a PlayStation developer, have to do with Minecraft? I was a little confused, <laughs> too. The fucking movie coming out 200 years from now. <laughs> we were actually talking about the oh, uh, Angry, yeah. Angry Birds film last night. My daughters are going crazy over that. Is and that so, out? Was it good? No, I didn't get a chance to see it. We actually saw Independence Day. But that's what they wanted to see. Oh, was so that good? To, yes. Yeah. I actually I really liked it. At first I didn't like the first 15 20 minutes, but they made up for it. It was actually a really good film and it nice. it it paid homage to the, to the original classic in my opinion. I really liked it. Yeah. You know, we are in 2016. Things aren't going to be as awesome as they were back in 96. But um, you know, all the CG now. 96, that was the year I was born. I think things are awesome now. All right, I'm deleting Robbie from this call right now. (laughs) (laughs) Damn it. Fuck you. All right. (laughs) Batman Return to Arkham Collection has been delayed indefinitely on all platforms. Holy holy rusted metal, Batman. What the fuck is going on? No uh, even window for this thing. It's just kind of, it'll be out five years from now. Who knows? Indefinitely delayed. What do you think that means, Brian? You think it means indefinitely? Yeah, I think it, it, it means indefinitely. I think it means you need to play it on the systems you already own it on. Right. Uh, was, <laughs> Bioshock Infinite's getting remasters. Or, uh, what is it? It's it, all the Bioshocks are getting that's remasters, in our news. right? That's in our it's news. in our news. Let's talk about that because it's way more interesting. Okay. I thought oh, this wait, was interesting that if that. you own those games on PC, they're going to give you the remastered versions for free. I thought that was, was that pretty announced? cool. Yeah. Yes. Isn't that cool? Oh, that's awesome. I own them on PC. That's awesome. Yeah. Man, I need to get them on PC. Yeah. Man. Check. The, I, I, is Steam sale over? It might be over. No, I think this is one of the last days. I think it's yeah. over on the fourth. Hopefully, it still going shows up. up quick. Yep. Go buy those now. <laughs> yeah. Right. You'll get them free updated. Yeah. Uh, Infinite is not getting a remaster on PC because it's so new that. It, you know, it's a little too soon. But Bioshock 1 and Bioshock 2. Bioshock 1 is, oh, I'll be man. honest with you, like That's... top five all time for me. Awesome. Um, I thought that was that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool that they're giving that away to people who already own it on PC. If you own it on 360 and you want it for Xbox One or PS4, you, you still got to buy it. But, yeah, you know. Do we have a cost uh, price on this? Is it seven or $60? Like, I didn't see a price for this. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know well, either. To me, this is even more inter- entertaining news and exciting news, especially if you guys know it, a very engaging Twitch streamer like Briar Rabbit. There's a brand new way to support your favorite streamers on Twitch, and that is cheering. <sighs> did, you make any, did you make any money off that? Uh, no, it only launched on the top. Uh, it launched for like 60 streamers. Uh, yeah, total. like really huge streamers. Yeah, like the that really sucks. big guys. Yeah. That's like giving money to the wealthy. Come on, make it easier for the small guy. Have you guys fooled around with cheering at all? Like, what do you think of it? Because I got to say, I really like it. Because I would donate to people I really liked on Twitch sometimes. And now this is a more fun way to do it. Like, I personally like it a lot. I kind of think it's cool, too. I'm not going to lie. You know, it's... It's in beta. That's another thing to remember. It's in it's beta. It's going to get a lot better. And I think... It would, and I'll be honest with you. I watched uh, Drop, Drop Frames, which is a podcast of a bunch of really big Twitch twitch streamers do uh, and they were talking about it and they actually had one of the developers from twitch on and they're saying there's going to be added features so right now it's basically a way for using you can use your amazon wallet to buy bits to to use to donate that's just the beginning in the future you're also going to be able to earn these bits somehow you're not necessarily going to have to pay for them which is cool and you'll also be able to gift these bits to friends and use them to sub so if you if you kind of follow that line down the logic route is that you'll be able to gift subs to other people. So like, you know, that's cool, man. I wow. Like that. You know, like if, if me and Beastly both love watching Robbie, uh, and you know, maybe, Aww. maybe Beastly's like in a better financial position than I am. And he's able to like, hey, you know, I know that you're in here all the time. Briar always watching Robbie. I'd like to gift you a sub because you're always here supporting, you know, that kind of thing I think is really cool. I love that. Wow. So, like, that's not now. 
but eventually like down the line that's what they hope that's kind of what they hope to do with it is kind of make it like a a cool thing so i don't you know right now i think it's it's controversial because like twitch takes the cut of it i believe yeah yeah if you buy if you buy a hundred bits which is a dollar you be you have to pay a dollar forty to get it uh which is pretty you know that's a pretty significant cut it goes down the more you buy so i think they should pull back on their cut a little bit, at least initially, because it seems a little rough. Yep. But uh, I don't know. It seems cool. Uh, I think right now it seems a little lamish. In the future, it seems like it's got potential. Yeah, it'll get good in the future, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I can't wait to share my bits with you guys. So you know, you can hold them and touch them and feel them. And, yeah. yeah, I'm going sure to spread my bits all over the place, man. <laughs> I could oh, share my man. bits all over the place. Toss my bits this way, toss my bits that way. <laughs> hey Beastly, I'm gonna toss my bits right at Beastly. Hey, baby, <laughs> I'm gonna whip about show Robbie yeah. my bits. <laughs> yeah, I'll throw them right at you guys. <laughs> it sounds like Twitch. If these bits are, are the way you guys are describing it, it's not gonna last too long. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I if I whip out my my bits and show Robbie, will I get arrested for that? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, I, only only <laughs> if Robbie tells. I'll put a restraining order on you. Actually, what's what will happen? <laughs> Twitch just is, uh, put out your bits on stream don't do that you know I, I really like progression it seems like twitch is really really fighting to to be even better than it is now i mean it's a juggernaut out there in the streaming industry and now they're making new ways for stream uh twitch streamers to make money kate was asking me today would i ever consider getting into twitch streaming i said babe i don't have time i barely have time to live right now but as time that, as things that, go on that is the biggest significant difference basically to me is Like now I'm really kind of split my time between YouTube and Twitch. And I really like Twitch because I feel much more of a connection to the community, to the chat. Like I know like the guys who are in chat right now, I know these guys, I've played with them. Like we talk a lot. Like, I feel like I know these guys in YouTube comments. It's a little different. Like I see a lot of YouTube comments where it's like, you know, somebody came in, you know, he just wants to call me an asshole and he's out, you know? It's a lot harder <laughs> to control people, too. You're like, you have a more positive... There's no moderation in YouTube chat, which means it's a little crazier. I like yeah. YouTube chat, too. I like or I, I like the YouTube comment system, but the chat, it's just much more real-time. It's much more yeah. right there. It makes it very dynamic and very fun, but it is a time investment, you know? With YouTube, I can work on one video for six hours, but I can do it in half-hour chunks throughout, you know however long I want to. When I stream, you know, if I want to stream for six hours, it's six hours. Blow your load right then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Blow all your bits. Blow your load right on stream. Yeah. Yeah. Bits, loads. That's what we're talking about. All right. So speaking of progression, guys, we know that the future of video games appears to be VR. Everybody has their hand in the cookie jar on some level when it comes to virtual reality slash augmented reality. And Nintendo has confirmed that the company is actively researching and investing in new VR technology. Is this exciting or what? Yeah, very yeah. exciting. I just hope they do it right. Whatever this is, if this is for NX or if Listen, this is like a standalone just, thing, who knows? I don't care what it is with Nintendo. I just hope they do it right because right now I'm yeah. just really, really worried. They got a new console coming out in March. We haven't seen anything. We just I'm want really, to, to I'm do really it right, scared. right now. Yeah. I'm really scared for Nintendo right now. But Nintendo VR would be incredible. A Mario game, uh, Zelda game in VR. Oh, my God, man. It, I mean, cool. they have so many great IPs. Can you and, imagine the vomit that a, a Mario game would induce? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but imagine playing Mario Galaxy in, in VR <laughs> with, like, the gravity flips and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 now, a, a game that I never really got a chance to play, guys, was Diablo Three. I've never played it. I never played oh, really? it. Really, it's good. The Excellent PS4 game. version is very good. Yeah. yeah, I never had a chance to play it. I'll probably end up getting it someday. I got so many games in the back catalog. Yeah. But a new, a new listing suggests that Blizzard is hiring a new game director for an unannounced sequel to Diablo Three. Now, I didn't get a chance to play it. Maybe you guys can enlighten me on what makes it so great and whether or not I should pick it up. Oh, that loot grind, baby! It's all about that loot. It's, it's all a- about. On demons and leveling up, it's very fun, very addicting. All right, so it's like Destiny. No, it's more of a dungeon crawling kind of game. It's I wouldn't really compare it to Destiny, maybe in terms of the way it it's, works, but not gameplay at all. It's Champions of Norath meets Destiny. What? The, what is that? I forgot I you were born. In like, you're born in 01, right? No, I, I know what it is. What? I never no, had no. Uh, But Briar, you did play this game, correct? I, I think I remember you playing. Uh, 
Diablo 3. Yeah, I have a copy. I like it quite a bit. I have. Uh, yeah. I actually have the uh, PlayStation 4 version of it, uh, which has been updated a ton since I bought it for free. Um, it came with... I can't remember what DLC it came with, and I don't see it uh, on the shelf. What's that? Reaper Souls. Yeah, it's very good. It's very fun. Yeah. I like okay. it really good. It, does it have uh, local uh, co-op or is it only online co-op? I, I don't remember, to be honest. With I don't you. know either. Yeah, okay. I think it's online only. All right. Well, it might be something I'll be playing soon and reviewing on my channel. But that is the news that we got. Are you guys excited for a potential sequel to Diablo Three? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's Blizzard. Everything Blizzard does is awesome. Like basically anything they do, I'm excited for. Even this even the Warcraft. Pretty movie. fucking true. You gotta admit, it's Blizzard. Like they're gonna make. Awesome Dude, I've games. talked to a lot of people who like that Warcraft movie. I understand that it's getting shitty reviews from, like, you know, movie reviewers, but I'm talking. A lot of people who went and saw that movie like it. I, 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 yeah. I haven't seen it. I probably will see it, but I've never played World of Warcraft in, in general. I was really shocked. I feel the exact same way. A lot of people were shitting all over the yeah. Independence Day Resurgence film. A lot of people were hating on that. It got yeah. like 5.6, or, you know, Metacritic 56. I watched it. And I was like, this is a good movie. So. To each his own, man. I mean, I'll probably get around to seeing it sooner or later. Yeah, and I mean, there's a big difference, right? When a movie reviewer comes in and critically analyzes a film versus just someone going in. Yeah. Like, I think there's a big difference there. Oh, I got a ton of movies to like that. that I, I absolutely love. And, like, if you look at Rotten Tomatoes, like, the film critics just bashed it. Give me an example, because I know you used to really be into films. Uh, Boondock Saints. Love that movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, damn, that's a good movie. That's a great movie. It was it was critically panned. Yeah, really? Mm -hmm. I don't even Birds think it made it. I don't even think it got released in theaters. <clears throat> I think it was straight to DVD. No, wow. you're just gonna blow your bits all over, and they'll raise the Metacritic scores. What the? Yeah, but those, that is well, crass, Robbie. That is crass. It's crass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking for an excuse to blow my bits everywhere. <laughs> The Beastly Thoughts is uh, a great community. I love this place. I love you guys. I love everybody who watches and participates. Oh, and, it, and so I wanted to, the Beastly Thoughts uh, community to be the first community. I talked to you guys before the show. You think it's a good time now? Oh, yeah. It's time. Yeah. yeah. It's, t it's time. It's All right. time. So we want to include everybody in this because yeah. your thoughts and ideas matter more so than mine or my wife's. Uh-huh. So That's true. Absolutely. Wow, that is very true. Yes. Yep. We we, we have a, a pretty amazing announcement. I wanted to announce it today. Well, tomorrow's my wife's birthday. It's the 4th of July. So I will be taking her to see fireworks tomorrow night. Uh-huh. Uh, but, oh, not outside, Briar. But, uh-huh. Get to uh, the point. On, Let's hear it. On, on top of that, we've got a great <laughs> announcement for, for everybody. Uh-huh. The Beastly Gamer is expecting a new member of the Beastly family. The literal, the literal family. That's uh, right. And you know what that means. We, hey, Twitch chat is going to name it. We got to yes. name that baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to name good. that baby. <laughs> All right. So in chat right now, we want to hear potential baby names for the Beastly Gamers newest baby. Let's set up All right, straw Robbie, you got enough. any suggestions? You got any suggestions? We are going to do a straw poll here. And uh, Beastly, I hate <laughs> to tell you this. This is contractually binding. So All if right. you don't name the kid, what we decide today, uh, my lawyers, and I only hire the absolute most dickish lawyers in the world. I mean, these guys <laughs> are real pieces of shit, Beastly. You do not want them fucking with you. I mean, they go right for the cojones, and they do not let go. They're like little fucking pit bulls. They come in, <laughs> and they grab on, and they do not let go. So Beastly, whatever the Twitch chat decides here, that is going to be the name of your baby. All right, so I'm seeing... Uh, beastly bits, I like that. Beastly bits, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, I'm seeing pop tart. <laughs> Very good. I like how it's all oh, lowercase yeah. too. That that that's cool. It's like you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna capitalize my name. Okay. Uh, Marty McFly, another good one. <laughs> ah, I love that reference. That's good. Uh, the king of King of Pablo's always trying to name a kid after himself. That's messed up, King. <laughs> but I'm still gonna put it on King of Beastlo. <laughs> I 
Okay, we're not gonna call him Harry Balls. I'm not doing that. No, Harry <laughs> Balls. I don't know, man. Like that says, I don't. You know, it's like a boy named Sue, right? You name your kid Harry Balls, and you are creating a kid who is tough as shit. Harry Balls is going on the list. Right. You know what I'm gonna do? Like, I'm gonna go do the Harry Balls B A W L Z, right? You know. <laughs> like, <trickle. laughs> Trickle. This is by far the dumbest show ever. <laughs> Dick Trickle, I like, I like. Oh man! <laughs> oh, I got a good one. Pissy Elliot is one. going on the list. <laughs> there you go. Uh, purple, purple muffin lip. <laughs> Robbie, why you gotta always go like and make it like obscene? Robbie, cr- yeah, man. come on, Robbie. Uh, we, we don't care about the <laughs> That's Those just the crass. Such positions that you be, you be doing, Robbie. <laughs> That's Fucking just Spanish crass. Spanish lion shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> chopper. Ah, sick like balls, Chopper. I like it. Chopper's all caps, though. So you're going to have to write that on the birth certificate. All caps if you go Chopper. <laughs> 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 Uh, Lord like Shax. <laughs> With friends like this. Come on, guys. There's no uh, Ariel. There's no... Uh, uh, give me some Final Fantasy names. Uh, we've Come got on. 10. That is our 10. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it has now started. Please vote early. Vote often. Remember, this is contractually binding, Beastly. I suggest you get in there and vote. Uh, yeah, if yeah, I were I'm you, sure I would I'm vote real. for option number one, which is my contribution, oh. Lil Beastly. Uh, yeah. Lil Beast, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's mom. <laughs> uh, to uh. vote. There we go. All right. Dick Trickle has taken an early lead. Oh, I like Dick Trickle. <laughs> 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 oh man! Uh, you guys are Max Malone. Uh, all right, we've got we've got kind of it's even all the way around right now with uh, Pissy Elliot, uh, Beastly Bits, <laughs> Pop Tart, Pissy Elliot, <laughs> King Beastlo has one vote. I wonder where that came oh. came from. King of Pablo, Harry Balls <laughs> is uh, in <laughs> in the in the leaders, but not quite in the lead. Dick Trickle still. Holding it down with go. two votes. Harry Balls now has two, too. So it's a tie between Harry Balls and Dick Trickle. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Trickle hype. These guys. Dick Doesn't matter hype. which name. Because it shows that uh, 40, both awful. 44 seconds <laughs> left just, to let vote. Me just, let me just say this. If this is the real way that names are decided, <laughs> our world will be fucked. <laughs> this is the way they name their children in America. Just the last... Get a bunch of listen voters. Straw votes on Twitch. Poll <laughs> oh, closing in 30 seconds. Uh, Dick Trickle and Harry Balls are tied for the lead. <laughs> I reserve match. the right to make a decision. If uh, if the chat cannot decide, I will take the top two and uh, make a decision uh, myself. Okay. As, as the authority. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dick Trickle. Right. I vote now, Dick now Trickle. Now, this is, this is my opportunity to see if we're really friends. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. When you say it like that, suddenly you feel some responsibility. Oh, okay. The poll has closed. The winner is King of Beeslo. What? Yeah. <laughs> King yes, of Beeslo. <laughs> what That's kind of person would name a kid Dick Trickle? Right? <laughs> You could have got a lot worse than that. Uh, King of Beast Slow. I can't believe that one won. I can't believe it. I, I really, I'm really, i shocked. I thought for sure Pop-Tart or Harry Balls was going to do it. Harry Balls. <laughs> yeah, that was a clear cut winner. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we all look forward to the delivery day of King of Beast Slow. Uh, if we get one of the mods to add that command in, uh, Baby 4, right? That's the fourth baby we've named on stream. I could do it. <laughs> this is the fourth baby we named on stream? Yeah, we have uh, Skinny's man? Child is named Batman Chalupa. Uh, Victor uh, found out he was having twins. The first kid is named Shit. Uh, hold on. Let me type it in. Shit. Command. Oh, that uh, kid is literally named Shit. I'm like, what? That's the worst. Victor's B, Victor B's child. Victor B2's child will be named Tinklebot. And uh, hold on. Baby <laughs> Uh, and the twin 
of that child will na be named Boner Spider. Oh, God. Uh, really, in all in all fairness, Beasley, it could have gone a lot worse. <laughs> it could have oh. gone a lot worse. Do we have a command baby four yet? <laughs> Oh, it's Boulder not in there yet. The it's not in there yet. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are fucked up, man. King of <laughs> Beeslow. We're all looking forward to the delivery of King of Beeslow. I hope it's a boy because I feel like it's gonna be it's gonna be a rough life for little <laughs> little girl <laughs> King of Beeslow. <laughs> no, I hope she's pretty. I hope she's pretty. <laughs> He's gonna be scarred for life. It, 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 I'm so sad that I can't see my wife's face right now. She's in the living room watching this shit, okay? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Kill me now. Kill me now. Uh, okay, <sighs> we'll, we'll make that. We'll make the command later, I guess. It's some reason Nightbot isn't being cooperative, I can see. Nightbot, so, yeah. So well, we're, we're right I mean, a momentous uh, beastly thoughts, I believe. Uh, naming a child. Uh, that's the first child that we've got to name on the beastly thought show uh i feel like we did it's a good a job moment yeah I mean, I, i'm really surprised we didn't go with harry balls there i'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> I'm too. Uh, you know it could have been yeah. fitting too i mean the kid kid could have had some really hairy balls you, you never yeah, know yeah. with these things could have or, been or, or the, the kid balls. could have none at all so that would have been a really <laughs> fucked up name yeah <laughs> harry balls on a girl <laughs> my oh, name man, is that, my that girl's beautiful. What's her name? Susie Harry Balls Beastly. <laughs> oh, you know, Dick Triple. <laughs> Harry Balls. Yeah. Congratulations, though. In all seriousness, Beastly. Congratulations. I'm really excited for you. Thanks, Another man. addition to the Beastly family. I got to buy uh, some more video games now. I got to get the little uh, handhelds. Right. Maybe a. a S and a Vita in about three or four years. You know, this kid's going to fucking wreck it, too, right? Going to kill it. No. Nova, she destroyed her first three PSPs. No, I mean, I don't mean literally wreck the game system. I mean, like, kill it in life. Like, Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. There's no oh, she's so, Yeah. Harry Balls. I mean, I, I mean uh, what was you the name again? Kick Beast Law was set. Yeah. <laughs> Harry Balls can be her, her I nickname. I forgot the name for him. The king of Harry Balls Beast Law. <laughs> <laughs> That's her middle name. Middle name that is Harry Balls. Option. First yeah, name, the, the king of... Last name Beastla. <laughs> That's the worst fucking names in history. Hey, uh, I, I would like to remind you about the lawyer situation, which I explained earlier. <laughs> yeah, we're in a rough spot with these I, lawyers, I so you kind of just got to. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's gonna do it for the show. Beastly, what are you up to this week? Oh God, I'm going to decide what game I'm going to be playing. Uh, I've really gotten into the habit of playing games through to completion. I, I think that the whole situation last year where I bought a million games and like played and beat four of them yeah. kind, kind of really changed my, my whole perspective on gaming. And so this year, I'm going to play and enjoy and see as many games through to completion as possible. I'm going to let my, my viewers probably decide later on today what game that's going to be. <laughs> you guys have any suggestions? I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm still laughing about the King of Beastla. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't mention yeah. it. I, I bought um, uh, uh, Homefront Revolution. And I haven't played it yet. Uh, I don't know if that's any good or not. But uh, I've heard it's complete dog shit. Have fun with that. No, oh, well, at least it has a nice name. <sighs> Better than yeah, Harry Balls could have been named that. <laughs> Robbie, what do you have to this week? Oh me, uh, oh, I'm still thinking about Harry Balls. Damn it, um, that's not the name, Robbie. You're thinking about Harry Balls from another. <laughs> piece. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the literal thing. Um, I don't know. I mean. I'm not sure what I'll... <laughs> I can't fucking stop thinking about that. <laughs> okay, I need to get it together. Once you got hairy balls on your brain, you know, on it's hard brain. to get them off. <laughs> yeah, try to sweep it off, I just can't do it, you know? <laughs> just sticks there forever. <laughs> uh, I'll be doing some gaming this week. Uh, probably playing a lot of PC. <clears throat> I mean, I've got... A lot of time alone this week too because uh family's out for the weekend so it's just me at home probably go see a lot of hairy balls this weekend and all by yourself oh yeah i'm the man of the house i'll be having a lot of hairy balls over you believe me i can invite as many as i want <laughs> okay so, we're good. why yeah. you gotta always like bring it to this crude place robbie i don't understand yeah. man we're having like a fan this is a family, family. fucking show man <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> Ready to be for everyone. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> forgot that. We discuss hairy balls and dicks and, you know. Balls? Like the energy drink I was going with. I think you're bringing it somewhere like oh, real perverted. Wait, really? Oh, see, I thought, you were <laughs> I thought you meant the literal hairy balls here. I'm so sorry. That was my fault completely. B-A-W-L-Z. Hairy <laughs> balls, the energy balls. drink. Balls. 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 <laughs> Rated H for so hairy balls. balls. <laughs> What's the age rating? What is the age rating on hairy balls? Yeah. We have to decide that too. Alright, guys. I I oh I just fucked up everything. Okay, there we go. Uh, I'll be back doing YouTube this week. Uh, I do plan on having a starter to keep it up. I know a lot of people are looking forward to that. I actually have a really special weapon in mind that I think is going to surprise a lot of people. Uh, I will be Twitch streaming as well. Uh, you guys really want me to stream on Xbox? I'm going to make a real effort to do it this week. Uh, I'm going to try to do it tomorrow. And you guys can hold me to it this time. I'm really going to try to do it on Xbox tomorrow. Just take some Harry Balls energy drinks. You'll be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much for watching. Bye, everybody. Always remember. Always Very remember. Balls. Remember Rip. us how we lived. 2016 to 2016. <laughs> <laughs> remember us how we lived. <laughs>